Games New to Me. Please like and subscribe. Hey guys, Rob here for Games New to Me. Welcome back. It's good to have you. We've got some No Man's Sky news for you today. You may want to put in that No Man's Sky disc into your PS4 because Hello Games has just released Update Patch 107 over the weekend for the PS4. The patch is 671 megabytes in size and was simply titled Bug Fixes. Now, Hello Games has updated info on what the patch does, so let's go through it since it's a big one and might just make No Man's Sky that much more enjoyable. Number 1. Objectives and Stuck Without Hyperdrive Issues Player are no longer able to redeem your pre-order ship at a point which would then prevent you learning the hyperdrive blueprint. And if you have done this, we save you. Player are no longer able to bypass being sent to find hyperdrive tech by reloading a save in-game at a very specific point. Wow, they really did a piss poor job of grammar and spelling in their blog post. I'll just say that much. And let's go on to number two, getting stuck in the world. Fixed a couple of low repro bugs that could result in you falling through the world and getting stuck underground. A ray cast in some space stations could hit a very specific point that would put the player inside the floor. Fixed an issue that would cause your ship to be thrown in the sky at high speed when taking off. In rare cases, could in turn lead to getting stuck. Fixed an issue that would cause your ship to get stuck in terrain and prevent you from taking off. If the player managed to outrun generation of terrain LOD1 and land inside an overhang. This actually has happened to me and it was very annoying. But let's go on to number 3, gameplay. Some players were unable to achieve the extreme survival journey milestone. This has been resolved. Fixed an issue where some players had some technology types being reported as already known when they weren't actually known at all. Under some circumstances, a message was sometimes misinforming you that you learnt a blueprint when you hadn't. This has been fixed now. It was possible you could use up all available slots for waypoints on the galaxy map and be unable to set new waypoints. This is much better now too. There was a bug that could cause objective markers to disappear when you loaded a previous save. This is fixed now. Fixed a rare issue when scanning creatures that would cause all planets to show up as 100% complete even if you had only completed one. Number 4. Save and Load Fixed a bug what could cause some corrupt save games to not be loaded. This is now fixed. I can read this to you exactly as written. Fixed an issue where saves made the system clock set in the future could cause problems. Try saying that fast. Let me try saying that fast. Fixed an issue where saves made the system clock set in the future could cause problems. Say that f five times fast. Number five, crash fixes. Fixed a crash that would sometimes happen when warping into a system with a space battle in progress. Fixed a crash that could happen when interacting with an NPC. Number six, tweaks and improvements. It is now easier to scan flying creatures. Fixed height and weight stats being the wrong way around arc for creatures are now fixed. Gek towers can no longer be interacted with repeatedly. The you have unredeemed items message will now only show for the first 5 minutes. Thank god for that. Fixed getting 0% charge on photon cannon when buying a new ship and constantly being prompted to charge it. Reduce suit VO for life support warnings and only do life support VO on 25% and 50%. That is fantastic news. Being at 75% and being told you have low life support was so irritating. 75% is not low life support, goddammit. Let's move on. Fixed grave being transferred to the new star system after you warp. Fixed toxic protection 3, Theta, from having the wrong name. Fixed incorrect marking of sea caves under floating islands. Turning down music and sound effects volume in the options will now work correctly. Mutes the voiceover also. If you change ship or multi-tool and then revert to previous save, the ship should now be the one you had at the time. Atlas station collision improvements to prevent you from bumping into them too much. Fix for the stars not being discarded during load warp causing the duplicate stars. PC only issues. Editing the settings file and corrupting it could cause the game to crash. Instead of crashing it will now revert back to the default settings. The inventory screen now works correctly regardless of resolution. Added error message 
storage for the old CPUs without SSE3 support. Synchronized frame capping with the first vSync removes some frame rate issues. Add its Steam ID to login call to help track down some login issues. Fixed the X key size on the Galaxy map. If you press Tab plus P in quick succession, the game paused and didn't let you out of it. Fixed a performance issue by defaulting your texture resolution to a sensible value based on available GPU memory. Users on Reddit compiled a list of noticeable changes post-patch. It's not officially from PS4, but it gives you some idea of what other players have noticed of what has changed. 75% life support is not verbally announced anymore. The small stutter after saving at an outpost beacon is gone. The recharge photon cannon text box prompt is gone. The upload discovery option is gone when on a planet with no fauna. When recharging the plasma launcher, it fully charges to 100% instead of 70%. Never heard anyone saying this was an issue, but it always happened to me, says a Reddit user. The Atlas path is now on the fifth waypoint marker in Galaxy Map. The height and weight is finally fixed when scanning a creature initially. And some users have reported that the, there seems to be a variation in fauna now with uh, creatures appearing with spikes on their heads and shells and just some variety added in. Hello Games also mentioned on Twitter that more changes are inbound in an upcoming patch. Partial credit PlayStationLifestyle.net I have yet to play No Man's Sky since patch 107, but I'm one of the few that saw a lot of potential in the game, even if it was executed very poorly. I'm hoping that the changes will be noticeable enough to make the game more enjoyable. I'll say this much about No Man's Sky. If I had bought it for 20 to 25 dollars, then I would have been satisfied. But at 60 dollars, I found it to be a really bad value. Let's see if this patch and whatever patches are on the horizon improve the experience and starts to win players back. I'd like to say that I really appreciate you watching my video. A big thank you to my subscribers. You guys rock. All of you are responsible for growing a really awesome gamer community around games new to me and it means the world to me. Please thumbs up this video if you haven't already. Please subscribe, it helps the channel and you get notified whenever a new video goes live. So please hit that subscribe button. This is Rob for Games New To Me. Be good to each other and I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye bye.